They hated him? Please. Karma couldn't help the scoff that formed in his mind. He leaned back on his pillows, holding one leg and the other pointed inward. He watched, drumming his hand on his soft bed sheets, picking his brain about what he should do. It wasn't his fault they started crying. No, not his fault. He just told them the truth. There was no reason for them to be acting as if he was in the wrong. He didn't even know why he was sitting here trying to convince himself of that. It was true. Karma sucked on his lip, glaring at the phone screen staring back at him. He'd messaged them again since the mall, only once, but his message had been undelivered. He tried to call them, but as it turns out, he was now blocked. He watched his last delivered text to them, infuriatingly confused. What the hell? He didn't think he'd said anything bad. Why am I even bothered? Karma picked up his phone, turned it off, and threw it across his bed. The house was quiet today, like always, but he didn't mind. Well, that's what he told himself. Karma hated the quiet. Ever since he was a kid, he felt like it screamed at him, at how alone he was, at how friendless and loveless he was. The red devil stood, stalking off to the kitchen. He opened the cabinet, the capsule of the copal, he called it, and backed up a few steps until he hit the counter. He leaned against it, watching the cup, letting it fill the emptiness around him. Whenever Karma looked at the cupel, whenever he watched it, tracing every edge with his eyes, he felt not so alone. He felt real, as if the cupel was the only thing that kept him from going fully mad. He chuckled to himself, feeling a bit better. He closed the cabinet and walked back to his room. He was still unsure of what to do about Ellen, but... At least the quiet wasn't screaming at him anymore. What's wrong? The question had your mind in a tizzy since the day at the mall. What's wrong? He'd asked. How stupid can one person be? Stupid, ignorant, infuriating, loser, idiot. These were all things Akabane was. Oh, entitled. That's what this stupid ass was. So damn entitled. You grit your teeth, walking as fast as you could down the hall and out of the school gates. You had been leaving as soon as the bell rang, up and out of your seat before your teacher could dismiss you. Yes, this was very unusual, but no one asked which you were thankful for. Right now, you didn't feel like talking to anyone, not even Rio, who had been blowing up your phone nonstop. Gods, you were so angry at everything, at the world. Royally pissed. You were royally pissed. You'd been avoiding her. That's why you'd been leaving as soon as the bell rang. You didn't want to bump into her or the bloody Akabane. Your stomach still gave you a hard time. You'd been taking medicine since that day at the mall last Friday, and today was Thursday, and you hadn't unblocked Akabane, nor had you messaged Rio back. You'd put her on silent and had kept her that way, which you thought she fully deserved, for bailing on you. And over the weekend, you had thought, coming to the conclusion that she might have even been blowing you off for a gabane. You couldn't believe it, but there was no other damned explanation. The thought made you sick, not only because it was a gabane, but because it was a guy in general. It didn't matter who it was. If she was blowing you off for someone she was interested in and didn't even have the gall to tell you, oh yeah, you were uber pissed. You stalked out of Kunigagawa's entrance, aiming for the train station. You were so focused on getting to the station that you didn't see when he'd popped out from behind a random tree. You held in your shriek, but God's damned. You glared, bastard. Then... You moved around and walked past him. He silently followed you, and for a second, you debated on ignoring him. 
but he spoke first, and you were inclined to bite his head off. Students walked past you, sliding disgusted and freaked out looks toward Akabane. One girl even went as far as to pull her younger sister closer, whispering something neither you nor Akabane could hear. You shrugged them off, annoyed by how scared they were of him. He was just Akabane, though sometimes you did forget his first name was Karma, and no one really knew how stupid he was. Leave me alone. Your words were bitter, just as his was last Friday. Ellen, Akabane? You stopped your walking, turned, and held his gaze. His mind, damn it, you couldn't figure out what was going on in there, so you deepened your glare, eyes turning to slits. What do you want? A few students turned their heads, your voice becoming a little too loud. You ignored them, but Akabane turned and growled at them. Okay, maybe he was just a little bit scary. He turned back toward you, waiting for the listening ears to pass. Then, avoiding your eyes again, said, Please, just, as if trying to find the right words to say. So close, so damn close were you to saying, piss off. But he said, I'm so, <laughs> You inclined your head, eyes popping up in shock. Akabane cleared his throat, <clears throat> turning away again, then meeting your gaze. I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn him. Damn your stupid smile. Are you trying to say yes, shut up? He glared, clearing his throat again. <clears throat> I am sorry. There. He huffed, placing a hand where his heart lay as if he might have a heart attack from saying that one word. Well, I'll be damned. You grinned at him, a hand on your hip. He scowled through his lashes. Yes, you will, if you ever mention this. I'm flattered, Akabane, but you couldn't even pay me to talk about you willingly. His mock smile made your mouth straighten. Goodbye. You turned and began walking away. But Akabani grabbed your arm, sleeve, and pulled you back. Wait, he said. Wait. You huffed, turning your head to look behind you. Yes? Do you forgive me? You almost smiled again at that. You tapped your chin and looked up as if contemplating. I don't know. Then your eyes found him. I'll sleep on it. He scoffed about the third time since this interaction. Oh, come on, Ellen. I apologized. And it took a hell of a lot. Is it really that hard for you? Akabane looked away, like he was unsure of how to answer. Most of the students were gone now, so there was no one around to hear your conversation. Akabane stayed, looking at the dirt ground when he said, I've never had to. Apologize, I mean. Your eyes softened for whatever reason, though you knew you should be mocking him. Being sad because he'd never had to apologize? Yeah, if it hadn't been confirmed before, it was now. Akabani is definitely a rich kid. He really something, you know that? You said, a half-amused smile on your face. Akabani looked up, and slowly, a small smile appeared on his face. You watched him, and he watched you. Just standing there, smiling at each other. And what might that be? You shook your head, full on grinning now. You might even be- No, 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 you were not. Definitely, certainly, for sure, not blushing. You were not embarrassed. You were not anything like that. This was Akabani for bloody sake. I need to go. You began walking away, smacking your cheeks as you walked, feeling how hot they were. Let me walk you, Akabane said, walking up beside you. Buddy, you said, you almost gave me a heart attack. And though you looked down to where your heart was beating frantically, you swear, you saw him wink.